So in this video, we're going to prove and create an intuitive understanding for the determinant of a two by two matrix with real entries. And after that, we're going to look at how that determinant actually relates to the multiplication of complex numbers. It's gonna be awesome, so let's get started. When we look at the determinant, it's helpful to remember that a two by two matrix like this is actually just two vectors smushed together. First of all, we have this vector AC on the left side, which we could put in our 2D plane here. And then after that, we have the vector BD that looks like this. The determinant of this two by two matrix is actually just asking what the area of a parallelogram defined by these two vectors would be. So if we complete the parallelogram just like this, what it's asking is if we start with normal 2D space and then we stretch it so that every square, originally a one by one square like this, gets stretched up into this parallelogram, how much would the area get scaled? So our job now is to find the area of this parallelogram. To do that, let's rotate it first so that it's horizontal, sitting along the axis of this first vector, AC. So our parallelogram looks something like this. This is our second vector, BD, going along in this direction. The area for a parallelogram is equal to the base times the height. And we know the base already because the length of the base is just going to be the magnitude of this first vector, AC. So let's call that first magnitude R1. Now after that, we need the height. And the question is, how do we get the height? And that comes from doing some trigonometry. If we call the angle in between these two vectors theta, we know that the vertical height of this parallelogram has to be the length of this second vector, we'll call that R2, times the sine of theta. That comes from the fact that sine of theta gives us the vertical value for a point on the unit circle defined by this angle. So when we scale it up by the length of our second vector, that gives us the vertical distance of this second vector. So this is the area that we're looking for. We can find R1 and R2 pretty easily because that's just the magnitude of each of these vectors. We can use the Pythagorean theorem for that. The one tricky part is the sine of theta here. We have to figure out what theta is. So to do that, let's go back to our original diagram. Remember the theta that we want to find is this angle on the inside. But in order to find the value of this angle theta, we're going to have to look for what other angles we already know in this diagram. And there are a few that we can look at. First of all, because we know the vector AC, we can find the vertical angle of this first vector. We'll call that theta 1, the angle upwards from the x-axis of this first vector. Similarly, because we know the vector BD, we can also find this value theta 2, the vertical angle from the x-axis of our second vector. And now we can see the theta value that we want right in here is actually just theta 2 minus theta 1. It's the difference between those two angles. So our final area formula is R1, R2 times the sine of theta 2 minus theta 1. All we have to do is figure out what this is. So to calculate this, we can start by noticing that we can use the sum formula for sines to expand out this sine in terms of theta 2 and theta 1 individually. So if we do that, we're going to get r1, r2 times the sine of theta 2 minus theta 1. Well, that's going to be sine theta 2 cosine theta 1 minus sine theta 1 cosine theta 2. Now, notice that everything in our equation now is in terms of two things. The magnitudes of these vectors, r1 and r2, and their angles from the x-axis, theta 1 and theta 2. That sounds a lot like polar coordinates. So let's see if we can use some polar coordinates to help us out here. In polar coordinates, we know that x is equal to r times the cosine of theta, and y is equal to r times the sine of theta. That comes from the fact that cosine of theta gives us the x value at a particular angle on the unit circle, and y gives us the vertical value. So if we multiply by the magnitude, that gets us the horizontal and vertical distance for our point. Now notice that everything in this equation is in terms of r's and sine thetas and cosine thetas everywhere. So all we have to do is take this equation and write it in terms of r cosine theta and r sine theta. Then we can get it back in terms of x and y, 
because both of our vectors here are expressed in terms of x and y values. So when we look at our equation here, we're looking for r cosine theta and r sine theta. For this first term, we first have r1 times the cosine of theta1 right here. Then we can multiply that by our r2 times the sine of theta2. That's all the parts of this first term. Then we subtract for our second term. Notice there's an r2 here because that's still multiplied in times the cosine of theta2 times r1, that last part, times the sine of theta1. And now we have to put this all back in terms of our original vectors. r1 times the cosine of theta1, that's going to be the x value of our first vector. The x value, that's a. r2 times sine of theta2, that's the y value, because we have a sine here, of our second vector. That's d minus r2 times the cosine of theta2, that's the x value of our second vector, that's b. And r1 times the sine of theta1, that's the y value of our first vector, c. And there we have it. The determinant for a 2 by 2 matrix a, b, c, d is equal to a, d minus b, c. That comes from the fact that the determinant is the area of this parallelogram here, which we can write as r1 times r2 times the sine of the angle between them. That's theta. That theta is equal to theta2 minus theta1, the difference in angles of those two vectors. And when we have this sine right here, we can split it up using that angle sum formula and then expand everything out in terms of polar coordinates to get our final result. So if anyone asks you, why is the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix equal to AD minus BC? You can say, well, it's the angle sum formula for sine. So now we have the formula for the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix, but I also promised complex numbers. So we're going to take this problem into the complex world, and we'll see an amazing identity at the end. Now to start off, one of the things that we can do when we have two-dimensional vectors is look at them instead as complex numbers. So if we draw a complex plane here, where instead of the x and y axis, we have the real and imaginary axis, we can write our vector AC as A plus CI. And we can write the vector BD as B plus DI. And we still want to find the area of that parallelogram from before, but we're going to try to do it a different way. Remember that when we look at complex numbers, we can also express them in a polar form because of Euler's identity. You can check a link in the description for proof of that. So we can write a plus ci as r1 times e to the i theta1. And we can also have b plus di be r2 times e to the i theta2. So one question you might have is what happens when we multiply two complex numbers in this polar form? Well, the answer is pretty simple. We can just do this multiplication out. First of all, we'll have r1 times r2. And then we'll have e to the i theta 1 times e to the i theta 2. Remember, when we multiply two numbers with the same base, we can add their exponents together. So we get e to the i theta 1 plus i theta 2. And we can factor out that i. So notice that the magnitudes have been multiplied together, and we've added the angles up here. This is starting to look very similar to what we had for our area formula. r1, r2 is there, but notice Right here, we want the sine of theta 2 minus theta 1. And the angle we have in here is essentially theta 2 plus theta 1. So the question is, how can we keep r the same, but turn theta 1 into negative theta 1? So we want to take our complex number a plus ci and flip it across the horizontal axis so that it has a negative angle. How can we do that? Well, if we look at the complex number that we have down here, Notice when we flip it to make the angle negative, the horizontal value stays the same. That real part stays the same. But the vertical element becomes negative. So instead of a plus ci, when we flip it along that horizontal axis, we get a minus ci. So this complex number will have the same magnitude, but it's going to have a negative angle. So now if we multiply this second complex number here by our new reflected complex number, we're going to have r1 but times e to the negative i theta 1. 
and then that's going to result in down here, instead of i times theta 1 plus theta 2, we'll have theta 2 minus theta 1. Now the last thing that we have to do is get a sine somehow out of this e to the i times some angle. Well remember, by Euler's identity, e to the i times some angle equals the cosine of that angle times i times the sine of that angle. So that's what we're going to use to get a sine out of our formula here. This is going to equal r1, r2 times cosine of this angle in here, theta 2 minus theta 1, plus r1, r2 times i, I'll bring the i out in front, sine of theta 2 minus theta 1. Now we have r1, r2 sine of theta 2 minus theta 1 right here, just like we need for our area formula. It's going to be the imaginary part of our result. So why is this useful? Well, the way that we got to this expression here was by multiplying two complex numbers. And we multiplied them here in polar form, but we also have them in terms of coordinates. Our first complex number here is a minus ci, and our second complex number is b plus di. So when we multiply these two together, the real part is going to be this first expression, and the imaginary part is going to be our determinant. So let's multiply this out and see what we get. If we FOIL this, for the real part, first we're going to get AB, and then times CD times negative I squared. Well, I squared is negative 1, so minus a minus will be a plus CD. Then we'll have plus I times AD minus BC. And right there is our determinant formula in two dimensions. Now here's another awesome thing. Do you recognize the real part of this expression here? Remember that r1 and r2 are just the magnitudes of vectors. So what's the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cosine theta? Well, that's equal to a dot product. The dot product between ac and bd. And we can see when we do this formula out, the result we'll get is AB plus CD, exactly the real part that we have here. So every time you multiply two complex numbers, you're always going to get as a result the dot product of two vectors and the determinant of a 2 by 2 matrix defined by those vectors. Isn't that awesome? That's just amazing. So we started by turning our two-dimensional vectors into complex numbers. By Euler's identity, we could write those in polar form, which allowed us to add the angles when we multiplied them. We reflected that first vector across the horizontal axis to make the angle negative, which is why we have a minus ci right here. Then when we multiply them together, that sine value, the imaginary value in Euler's identity, is what we have for the determinant. So the imaginary value of this multiplication will give us the determinant formula. So if anyone asks you, where does the formula for a 2 by 2 determinant come from? You can tell them, because that's how complex numbers multiply.